once again we find ourselves face to face. I'm Beric Livingston and you apparently are the country's most devoted potterheads. As such, 2057 is a number that should be etched into your collective memories. 2057 is not the number of Gryffindor students in detention, nor is it the number of pages in the Deathly Hallows. 2057 is the number of winners last time there was a Potter-themed show, which, whether it occurred because of sorcery, the use of forbidden spells, or other nefarious and proscribed means, or whether in fact it indicated that some of you have actually paid attention to what you have been shown, you can rest assured that it will not happen again. You know, <clears throat> I really will be struck down by Alan Rickman if I keep up this terrible accent any longer. I'm sorry. So let me just say this. Tonight, we are going to find the 100 most knowledgeable Potterheads in the country. We're going to keep asking questions until the number of players is 100 or under. Those players will be tonight's winners. Not only will they share £1,000 and the glory of winning HQ trivia, but we'll present them with a personalised certificate from HQ, confirming them as the best of the Harry Potter best. So, tonight the questions are of course all Potter themed. As usual, you'll have 10 seconds for each, and as usual, you can use extra lives to get back in the game if you get a question wrong. But, you can only use extra lives on the first 14 questions. From 15 onwards, you're on your own. How many questions we'll have depends on how long it takes to whittle you down from the simply brilliantly knowledgeable to the actually or inspiringly well informed. You can use erasers if you need to. You know how it all works. Let's see how you do. Here's Q1. How are parcels and letters usually sent in the wizarding world? Owls, house elves, the night bus. Yes, we are going postal straight away on Q1. Now, they're hardly your average paper boys, but who's the magic version of the Royal Mail? More hooty than spooky, they use owls. Yes, yes, have a hoot about that one, 76,696 of you who got that one right. Of course, Hedwig and her friends, here they are, flying in to pick up the post. Aren't they lovely? Let's move on. Now that they've taken that away, let's move on to Q2. When does Harry learn he's been accepted to Hogwarts? Christmas morning, his 11th birthday, the night before Easter. Yes, cast your mind back to that very first book. A knock at the door and Hagrid on the other side, he makes Santa look svelte, but Hagrid did not turn up on Christmas morning. The 31st of July, it was on Harry's 11th birthday. What a birthday present. It was 71,979 of you getting that one right. Now, coming up this Thursday, we're going to take you to another universe with another themed show. And this time, it's the MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Those amazing films from 2008's Iron Man onwards. Bring your superhero skills to the party, because it'll be a goodie. That's Thursday at 9. Let us move on to Q3. Which of these is a non-being that takes on the form of a person's worst fear? Demiguise, Narl, Boggart. Now, your worst fear tonight may be going out on Q3. These are three fantastic beasts, but who can't help but scare the bejesus out of you? The most haunting of Humphreys, it's a Boggart. A bogger, yes, a gnar is like a hedgehog, demiguy is a cute little ape thing. 57,511 of you getting that right. Yeah, 15,000 odd eliminated. Let's go on to Q4. Ron's pet rat Scabbers is missing which of these? An eye, a toe, a tail. Scabbers always being chased around by Crookshanks. Crookshanks was part nasal and could tell duplicity. And so Crookshanks probably sniffed out that Scabbers was actually Peter Pettigrew in disguise. But which missing body part gave Scabbers away? A finger for your foot, it was a toe. Yes, and towing the line with that question, 46,757 of you there. Ah, oh, sweet little Scabbers. 
Uh, and now, Q5. Neville Longbottom's Boggart took on the appearance of which of these? A Dementor, Aragog, Snake. Hmm. We've talked about Boggarts, we've talked about scariness. Now, think back to the wardrobe. We already know about them. Which of these was Neville's biggest fear? The acting excellence of Alan Rickman that no one can really emulate. It's Snape. Snape, it was. Think of that scene, 44,018 of you getting that one right. Take a look at this. Ridiculous! <laughs> yeah, Neville magics his grandma's clothes onto Snape, somehow making the whole thing less scary. Well, it's classic Gryffindor, isn't it? Q6. Ambrosius Flume runs which type of shop? Antique shop, joke shop, sweet shop. Ambrosius Flume, ex of Hogwarts himself and a member of the Slug Club. What kind of shop was it? It's one of Hogsmeade's most popular stores. But what's Honeydukes? Flogging. Better for chocolate frogs than chocolate teapots. It's a sweet shop. Yes, and sweet. Getting the right answer, 17,695. But let's say that's the first savage question of the show because 26,707 of you were eliminated there. Borgen and Burks claims to be an antique shop, but its true business is somewhat darker. But yes, Flume Shop is a sweet shop. On Sunday night, it's another 100. And because it's our big 5K prize, that means every winner gets at least 50 pounds. So join us for that one. Queen Shazza will be in the chair once again. She may stand, she can do what she likes, but it's gonna be a fantastic show. And now, just time for a big shout out to Alex Wallace, to the L3 airline pilot cadets in Coventry, and to Katie, your husband Ollie says you're a muggle, but definitely the kind he'd like to snuggle. Onwards to Q7. What's the title of the opening chapter in the first Harry Potter book? The Boy Who Lived, Owl Post, The Worst Birthday. Cast your mind back to that first Harry Potter book. If you were one of the people who got the first 500 copies, they're worth about 40 grand now. If you went for the worst birthday, then you clearly haven't read it. Focusing more on the past than the post, it was the boy who lived. Yes, and living on into the next round, 17,632 of you, well done. The worst birthday opens a chamber of secrets while Owl Post kicks off the prisoner of Azkaban. All right, 17,632 coming with us into Q8. Which of these is not the name of a house elf? Creature, Herbill, Winky. Those poor old house elves, although they did do a lot for fashion. Tea towels and bits of old, <laughs> thrown away clothes are back in in a big way. Just check the catwalks. They could never replace Dobby, but who isn't even a character in the wizarding world? Making essential shampoo instead, it's Herbill. Yes, Herbill Essences, 14,014 of you knew that. Lost 4,000 there. Winky used to work for the Crouches, while Creature has served Sirius Black's family for centuries. Okay, about 500 of you using extra lives to get back in on Q9. Which of these potions contains leeches, flies, and knotgrass? Aging potion, polyjuice potion, pepper up potion. Now, we see this kind of thing on sale in juice bars all across the world now. These are three things I'd rather not find in my drink though, thanks. However, which is full of them? Parity plonk, it's polyjuice potion. Yes. Pretty Polly, 10,151 of you getting that one right. The rank potion lets you look exactly like someone else. I'd prefer to use our amazing makeup artist Circa, thank you. Q10. Which of these pubs is not located in Hogsmeade? The Leaky Cauldron, the Three Broomsticks, the Hog's Head. Which pub do we want here? They will all serve you butterbeer, but which one won't you find in Hogsmeade? Making quite the mess in London, it's the Leaky Cauldron. <coughs> Excuse me there, of course it is, the Leaky Cauldron. 7,104 of you, knowing your pubs. To Muggles, it's an abandoned shop front on Charing Cross Road. To Wizards, it's the doorway to Diagon Alley. Okay, it's getting quite exciting. 23,000 people still watching, but just 7,000 left in the game. Q11. This is usually the penultimate one, but not tonight by the look of things. What's the name of Percy's owl? Arnold, Hermes, Pigwidgeon. 
Percy's owl. Yes, how well do you know your pets? J.K. Rowling said she based the owl designs and species on some half-remembered things in the back of her mind that turned out to be right when she saw some actual owls several years later. Now, they're just a few of the Weasley pets, but which beastie belongs to Percy? The Greek god of spam mail, it's Hermes. Yes, and messengering on to the next round, 4,949 of you. Yeah, we're losing a steady few here, but there's still 5,000 odd Potterheads in the game. Pigwigeons, Ron's Owl, while Ginny named her Puffskin Arnold. Okay, what would have been the last question now? Q12. The cry of which of these is fatal to anyone who hears it? Mandrake, Hodag, Basilisk. Uh, this could be the cry of someone going out on Q12. I hope it's not you. Looking at a basilisk will make you go bye-bye, but who's got the sayonara shriek? Mr. Hotline Bling, it's my Mandrake. Yeah, Mandrake there saying goodbye. 5,284 of you still in the game. The plant is used in many antidotes, though I'd advise letting the professional do the harvesting. Okay, let's go on. Q13. Who was the seeker for Bulgaria in the 1994 Quidditch World Cup final? Viktor Krum, Alexei Levski, Ivan Volkov. Hmm, Tyler West probably knows the answer to this one, but do you? Three Bulgarian legends, but who snatched the snitch in 1994? Coming out of retirement in 2014, it's venerable Victor Crum. And Crum's 4,377 of you knew that one too. His capture was spectacular, but it wasn't quite enough to beat Ireland, who hung on to win by 170 points to 160. But you knew that already, didn't you? OK, we're going to have another one. Q14. Dumbledore compliments headmistress Madame Maxime for which of these? Her dancing skills, her accent, her silk shawl. Ah, uh, romance is alive and well in the Harry Potter books. We all know it. She does have a French accent, but that's not what Dumbledore focused on. Throwing the most elegant of shapes, it was her dancing skills. Yes, and waltzing on to the next round, 3,189 of you. She may have towered over even Hagrid, but Dumbledore described her as an excellent dancer. Yes, he did. Q15. Ron's first broom is so slow that it's said to be overtaken by which of these? Marching ants, crawling snails, passing butterflies. Yes, sweeping into the next round if you get this right, they'd all sweep past my broom, but which of them raced past Ron's? The snails of the sky, it was passing butterflies. Ooh, and I'm feeling some butterflies because 2,748 of you are still in the game. You guys are too much. The famously cheap shooting star broom lost height and speed over time, and it was hardly a racehorse to begin with. Oh, well. A bit like my first car. It lost height all the time. The tires were flat. Q16. Harry writes about which of these during the summer before his third year at Hogwarts. Wendell in the Weird, the Bloody Baron, Herpo the Fowl. Yes, now do you know what your essays were about in these books? Hardly the most heroic of subjects, but who did Harry write his summer assignment about? Even stranger than her name would suggest, it was Wendelin the Weird. And you will be wendling your way onto the next round, 2014 of you there. Wendelin enjoyed witch burning so much, she allowed herself to be caught on 47 different occasions. Now, don't forget that your extra lives cannot be used now, so it is getting exciting. We're moving on to Q17. One of Gildroy Lockhart's dreams is to release a series of which of these? Teeth whitening potions, charisma potions, hair care potions. Ads for them keep popping up on my Facebook feed. But which one are we looking for? Three rather random dreams for a Hogwarts professor, but this is Gildroy Lockhart we're talking about. High quality quiffery, it was a range of hair care potions. My favorite. Absolutely smashing for my wig. 1,699 of you knowing the answer to that one. The colossal liar did invent a shampoo, but it was deemed too expensive and dangerous for the open market. I tried it, it didn't work. What can I say? I've left a review. Q18. In a standard game of Quidditch, how many broomsticks would you usually expect to see in the air? 20, 15, 10. Hmm. Now, how well do you know the sport here? 
calling Tyler, it's too late. It makes ice hockey look chilled, but how many brooms are busting about up there? The oddest number on offer, it's 15. 15, did you get that? Did you count them right? 941 of you did. Yeah, we lost 758 there. Seven players on each team does make 14, but they need someone to referee the thing. There you go. Q19. Which Harry Potter character did Stephen King describe as the best fictional villain since Hannibal Lecter? Dolores Umbridge, Draco Malfoy, Voldemort. If Stephen King says it's scary, you better believe it's scary. He created Pennywise, Carrie, and the twins in The Shining. But who keeps Stephen King awake at night? Prim and properly patronizing, it's Dolores Umbridge. And not taking Umbridge with that question, 807 of you, even though you did take Umbridge with that question. She was infuriating, but I'd much rather hang out with Dolores than Hannibal. Now, this is, this is quite monumental. We are going on now to the 20th question of the show. And there's still 807 of you in the game. That's how good you are. Let's see how long you can keep this up. Q20. If the chaser keeps their hand on the quaffle as it goes through the goal, what foul are they committing? Haversacking, blatching, quaffle pocket. Now, I mean, you know, I didn't even have a clue about what these things were. There's 700 ways to foul in Quidditch, apparently. But which one is the one we're after here? Holding on, when you're meant to let go, it's haversacking. And having a go at the right answer there, 284 of you. Yeah, another savage question. We lost 523. It's getting into the tough final straight here. Blatching is intentionally colliding with another player, while quaffle pocking is what the Aussie cricket team did. <laughs> okay. Q21. Which of these Christmas presents does Harry receive from the Dursleys in his fourth year at Hogwarts? A single tissue, a 50p piece, a toothpick. Are oh, those Dursleys and their special approach to looking after children? These are three classics. But which of these generous gifts did Harry receive in the Goblet of Fire? Dry your eyes, mate, because it was a single tissue. Yeah, a single tissue, and some of you will be crying. 108 of you not crying in that round. Ooh, we're getting very, very close to the 100 now on Q21. The gift is described as an all-time low, but even an Xbox looks rubbish when you've got an invisibility cloak. 108 players left on Q22. Here we go. Which of these is not a book by Gildroy Lockhart? Dalliances with dragons, break with a banshee, gadding with ghouls. Not a book. How well do you know your Harry Potter authors? They all sound impressive, but who isn't one of Lockhart's bogus biographies? Flirting with fire, literally, it's dalliances with dragons. And how many winners do we have? We have 96. Yes, 96 people have won that round and you have therefore won the game. Yes, you are the best Potterheads in the United Kingdom. Huge congratulations to you, 96. I wondered how long you could keep it up. You did fantastically well. Possibly one of the longest games in HQ's history. Definitely the most exciting. 10 pounds and 41 or 10 pounds and 42 pence is yours. Come see Simontino, massive pants, rugby playing something or other. Someone who looks like Skeletor, but I'm sure it's just the lighting. Someone on a really cool road that looks like it is out in Utah in the United States. Well done to all of you. That was an exciting ride on the Potter Coaster today. In fact, I feel like I've done a very long journey on the night bus. I'm Beric Livingston. You can find me on Twitter or Insta at Beric Living. The main HQ account is at HQ Trivia UK. Tune into any of those to find out how our Harry Potter champion certificates will be sent out. And now we have Marvel on Thursday, The 100 on Sunday's big game. But before that, we're back tomorrow at 9pm for our regular game of mixed questions on all kinds of subjects with another £1,000 prize. Till then, good night us, HQ -tious. Well done, yes, and goodbye.